Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. Today we are going to be doing a full update slash walkthrough of all of the plants in my collection. And I thought that right now would be the perfect time to do so because we're right before spring and I have a lot of just things that I want to do with my plants in preparation for spring, but I haven't exactly started yet. So this is almost going to be a kind of before like tour, I guess. And I know I still need to do my official houseplant tour. I keep putting it off because I put so much pressure on myself, but hopefully within the next month that will be up. But anyways, consider, consider this like the before because I have a lot of propagations that need to be potted, a lot of plants that need to be cut up that I want to start propagating for spring, um, things that need to be repotted, things that need to be just like displayed and organized better. I have a lot of just like ideas and plans for what I want to do this growing season. So of course I'm really excited about that, but I did want to do a walkthrough and just kind of let y'all know what's going on with my collection right now. It's just a continuous work in progress, which I'm sure you can relate to if you also have a lot of plants. It's a very sunny day today, which I am so, so grateful for, but I'm hoping that it doesn't interfere with filming too much. I'm going to try to you know, get good shots of everything. But yeah, it is very um, bright and a little bit backlit in here at the minute. Anyways, without further ado, let's just hop into it. Okay, let's start over here. First of all, here's the queen. Hello, beautiful. Hello, beautiful. I actually want to first talk about my philodendron Florida ghost or point her out at least because I'm just so, so impressed with this plant, y'all. I really didn't know what to expect when I put that plant up there because as you can see, it's basically at the ceiling. It gets minimal light. Today is very sunny and even with it being so sunny, like it still just gets very <laughs> low light. I let this thing dry out all the time, way too much because it's up so high. So I don't, you know, I don't like climbing up there all the time. So really it just gets neglected, but yet, it grows continuously. It gives me beautiful, like, you know, pretty mature looking leaves. And yeah, it just blows my mind. And still like white, or at least like a really light yellow um, kind of leaves. I'm actually gonna hop on a stool here and show you. Okay, let's hope this Ikea stool does not decide to croak on me, but this is the last leaf that she put out. And look at that. Like, how is it growing like this in the conditions that I've provided for it? I have no idea. But if you're looking for a hardy philodendron, I highly, highly recommend this one. It's also working on another new leaf right there. Just gorgeous. And this is actually behaving and slowly turning green. So it's in that kind of minty phase right now. But yeah, she's just stunning. Um, this plant is in a self-watering pot in pond. So that's like the only reason that it's doing well probably. But yeah, I just had to highlight her for a second because I'm just so impressed with this plant. And then down here basking in the sun, we have Miss Monstera Thai Constellation. She does have this plant spectrum 32 light in front of her as well. You can't really tell that it's on though because it's so sunny right now. Um, this plant does actually get a pretty great amount of light um, at this time of year when it's a sunny day because the sun does come all the way back here, which is really nice. But yeah, she's doing incredible. I'm so, so happy with um, the growth that I'm getting on this plant now. The variegation is stunning on this newest leaf. Actually, this isn't the newest leaf, this is, but um, this is on a different, this is the newest leaf on the larger plant in here. And then the smaller plant in here, this is the newest leaf and it's still hardening off but we've got lots of fenestrations. It did get a little bit torn there, but that's okay. But yeah, it's just looking gorgeous. Lathia warshawixii is doing really well also, which I'm very happy to say because this plant was on the struggle bus for a long time. Um, there is gonna be a whole video on this plant, so I'm not gonna talk too much about it, but it's doing really well in pond so far. Okay, next is the Millsba Wide Cabinet, and I'm not happy with this cabinet right now. It really needs to be redone. It's just not looking good. It mostly has a lot of small plants that just aren't looking amazing. They need to be repotted. They need to be propagated to be made fuller. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just not styled well. <laughs> so I don't know if there's anything to really show you in here, but let's look anyways. Also, I need to redo this weather stripping because it's all gross and falling off. One of my favorite plants in here right now is this Alocasia odora aurea variegated. It is so, so pretty. Like, look at this leaf. 
Oh my gosh, that half moon variegation. It's just gorgeous and it's just popped out a new one. Oh my gosh. Is this like fully variegated or something? It is Polaroid variegation, so it's hard to see at first. But that like looks like it's all light. <laughs> so we'll see. But anyways, it's doing really well since I repotted it. My Epipremnum Marble put out this leaf, which I thought was kind of cool. I mean, it has a lot of green, but it's just different than the other leaves because the other ones are so, so variegated. So I kind of like that one, to be honest with you. But this plant, I'm probably gonna end up chop, chopping, propping, and repotting because, I don't know, I just, I neglect it. So it's not really doing too much, but I do really wanna see this grow and size up. So I need to put more effort into that one. I also recently moved my Clarinervium into here. So I'm thinking it's gonna be a little bit happier because it was in the office before and it just wasn't getting a lot of attention. So yeah, it's so cute. It's just a little baby still. And then lots of Hoyas that I want to chop and prop and repot. They look just kind of crazy. Also my Nepenthes, they're doing okay, but I think I'm gonna repot these as well soon because these little pots just dry out so quickly. So maybe I'll do like a carnivorous plant repot with me. Let me know if you're interested, but yeah. My giant philodendron narrow, I just kind of ran out of space to put it. So it's just kind of sitting up here for now and I think I'm gonna end up chopping this one and restarting it because it's just, it's at the top of the pole and it's just looking a little bit crazy. It's also always blooming, which is kind of annoying because I'm always having to cut them off, but um, yeah. It's definitely kind of just, it's gotten really big and then it gets tricky when plants get this big and when they take up like such a big diameter of space, you know? Makes it tricky to figure out where to put it. So, so yeah, I'm still kind of figuring out what I'm gonna do with him. Up there, we have my Philodendron Camposportuanum, which I recently potted up. This is cuttings. And those cuttings were in water for, since before I moved. So like eight months or nine months. So I don't know how they're even gonna do that. I just potted them up like a week ago, maybe. So hopefully they'll grow. I wasn't even sure if I wanted to keep this philodendron, but I decided that I did. So I'm gonna give it a shot and see how it does. Oh, another huge philodendron that's taking up a big chunk of space right now is my philodendron tortum. This is, again, is just one that I'm not really sure where to put it now because it's just gotten so massive. Like the leaves on this are huge. It's beautiful. It's such a cool philodendron. I love it. I just, um, I just need to find a better spot for it. I also have Monster Albo kind of shoved back there. Um, Philodendron El Choco Red, which has given me this new leaf, which I think I'm gonna chop up the El Choco soon. I kind of want to start over because it's just these two big leaves and it has super long petioles. And um, yeah, I'm just not super happy with it. So I think I'm gonna end up chopping that one too. And then behind these plants in here next to the window are some really beautiful Hoya. My Hoya Wyettii has really just been shining lately. I'm so, so in love with it. Like there's so much new growth, all of these leaves. It's getting so full and big and it's even starting to trail. And something that I really want from the Hoya Wyettii is for it to bloom because I love the blooms on this plant. So yeah, I'm really hoping that one day it will flower for me. I'm always keeping my eye out for peduncles, but I haven't spotted one on it yet. It just looks so healthy though. Like these leaves are gorgeous. And the dark margins are so pretty because it's getting a lot of light. Oh my gosh, see the sun is making it kind of hard to see. But this is a south facing window. So these plants get a ton of light, especially when it's sunny out. We also have my Hoya Croniana Super Silver here, which is kind of hard to see. So let me pull it out. Actually, this needs to be watered today. Oh, it still has blooms. Oh my goodness, I didn't know if the blooms were still gonna be on it. But yes, she has bloomed for the first time. Um, she put out a couple of them. Let's take a look. Oh, it still has multiple. Oh my goodness. So it had a bloom like up here and then that died off. And then it opened this one right here. Look at that. So gorgeous. And then I saw another peduncle. Where was that? Oh, right here. There's another peduncle. Some blooms coming in there too. So that's really cool. 
such a beautiful Hoya and honestly really easy going too because this thing has been neglected like crazy and it's literally living right above the baseboard heater getting scorched by it and it still is just growing and blooming and doing amazing. This is my little strawberry begonia that wasn't looking great when we repotted this not too long ago, um, but I think that it's actually gonna pull through because there's new growth in there coming in and there's also like little babies growing there. Do you see that? So I think it's gonna be okay, even though a lot of the leaves like do not look good. I think she's gonna make it, you guys. So that's great. Ficus shivariana is doing okay, although at a little bit of a standstill. Hopefully once we get closer to spring, she'll start growing again. I also think that she needs to be repotted. And then we have a lot of philodendron that need to be uh, potted up, like propagations. For example, my philodendron varicosum right here. There's a whole bunch of cuttings of that in this little book propagation thing. So I'll probably be doing that in a video soon and giving it a poll and everything. We also have Jacinia pothos, philodendron rio, philodendron heteraceum variegated, like a bunch of things that just really need to be potted, as well as all of my imports here. Um, if you saw my green spaces import video, they're all doing okay, but I'm going to film a, a dedicated video as an update for these slash like a when I pot them up, but they're doing okay. The variegated chia pens, oh my gosh. I just, I'll never get over that leaf, it's so pretty. My philodendron, or sorry, not philodendron, my, um, what is this, alocasia, alocasia dragon's breath is doing really well. Oh my gosh, it's just so stunning. I can't get over this one. You can see that there's a little new leaf starting as well. Very fun. But yeah, it's a really beautiful one. My goodness. My Antoro velvet alocasia is doing pretty well after we repotted it as well. We did this in my Q&A video, my Q&A repot that I posted a couple of weeks ago. Also, my UFO planter Linearis is doing amazing. This thing has been growing like crazy and I really wasn't sure how it was gonna do like in this type of upside down planter situation, but it's been doing amazing. The only thing about this is that it's a little bit annoying to water. I have to kind of like hang it on my sink so that it can drain through because it has to drain for a while or else I hang it back up there and it just like pours water, not pours, but it drips water out, you know? But in general, I'm so, so happy with this. I love the way it looks. I love that this plant is actually happy and growing in here. It is just super, super cool. Crimson Queen has just been kind of hanging out. She actually doesn't look amazing after I um, brought her in from outside in the fall. Like she definitely took a beating living outside. So I'll probably leave her inside this summer and see how she does. I do have a peduncle, which isn't really doing anything. I don't think that that's going to turn into anything, but it is cool to see a peduncle on her because it's been my, one of my goals for like years now to get a bloom on her and it's never happened before, even though she's so, so mature, like she's massive. Oh, here is my philodendron mame in Lekka. We repotted her in my last plant chores video and she's doing well. Nothing really crazy has happened, but I mean, she's hanging on. She looks pretty much exactly the same and it's been a few, like maybe two or so weeks now. So I'm glad that she, you know, hasn't gone downhill or anything because Lekka can be really hit or miss, mostly miss for me, but yeah. I honestly should probably move her, um, closer to the window because as you can see, she's not really getting any light there. Maybe I'm gonna move her to the counter right now so I can remember to do that. <gasps> oh my gosh. I thought I would just do a little root check, not expecting to see anything happening, but I can actually see a root, you guys. I'm so shocked. I am so shocked. Do you see that? Wait, I'm gonna have to move closer, but I don't wanna drip everywhere. Do you see that root poking out of there? Out of that little slit? Oh my gosh. Wow, she is actually living in Le Lekka. She's living, you guys, she's not dying. I am so, I am so impressed with that. What the heck? Oh my gosh. I think this is gonna be a Lekka success. Okay, I'm actually gonna put her on the table because then she can hopefully soak up some sunshine. Okay, and then over here on the calyx, I know I've shown this to y'all, but I'm just obsessed with this Ludicia discolor right now, um, my jewel orchid, because it's blooming, and oh my goodness, is that not just like the cutest? Like how cheerful is it? 
to just see that. Like that is so cute. I love it so much. It honestly makes my day every single time I see it. So yeah, I love that bloom. Another one coming in, slowly progressing here. Get a little close up of that. My second philodendron, or I guess my third. I have one, two, three philodendron Florida ghosts and they're all doing great. What an amazing plant. Variegated Thanksgiving cactus is doing well. After the repot, it fell down, broke. I repotted it and now it's starting to grow again. New baby growth right there. Hoya shepardii is trying to croak on me. Don't know why, but I think maybe it wasn't getting enough light. It was like, it's been really dark here the past few weeks um, and it was sitting on the edge there. So it was not getting hardly any light. And then I noticed all these leaves were dying off. So, whoops, yeah, that one literally just came off. So I've moved it closer to the window and we'll see. We'll see what happens, but it honestly looks like it's doing that thing where one vine just completely dies. I don't know what is with my Hoya doing that lately, but it's a thing. And then over here, we have something that's relatively new. It's this Ikea mini greenhouse. It's the Acrobar, and it is the larger of the two options. And I'm really excited about it, super happy with it so far. I set this up in a Patreon video. Um, I added a Barina grow light inside there. And then I tried my best to weather strip this, but I need to go in. I bought, um, where is it? I don't know where it's gone, but I bought, yeah, some different weather stripping and some electrical tape that I'm gonna try my best to seal this with because I just kind of did like a makeshift job right now. Like I literally have like scotch tape on here and like a wire cover down here, trying to just create a bit of a barrier because this thing has a ton of gaps. Um, I think because it's so hot right now, it's 61% humidity, which normally this is like 83%. I probably need to wet the sphagnum again too. I put some sphagnum in there to try to increase the humidity and it works really well. But yeah, these begonias are doing amazing. They're so happy. Like I have lots of new growth. I have new growth on pretty much all of them, I think. I'll have to do, I think I'll do a whole like repot video because these all need to be repotted. Look at the moon hat, oh my gosh. Oh, is it even focused? Whoops. That is so gorgeous. Milano Bellata. Yeah, there's some really, really cool begonia in there. So I would like to make a whole begonia repot video. And all of these cool new begonia are from um, Chlorophylls. You can find her on Insta and she does sell a lot of begonia. And I think maybe some other plants too. More propagations. <laughs> I'm not kidding you guys. I have so many propagations to pot up. Monstera Albo. Philodendron subhastatum variegated, um, begonia lucerne. I took these cuttings from my begonia lucerne because she looked like she was trying to croak on me. So I figured I would take some insurance cuttings and they did root up. And also the other like base of the plant is growing too. So it's all good. More cuttings along the windowsill here. Oh, my Hoya, um, what's it called? Uh, New Guinea ghost is doing amazing. It is so so pretty oh my goodness i'm obsessed with it it's just gorgeous alocasia jacklin is doing okay the leaves look like they're yellowing a little bit so i don't know but she's still okay i think maybe this leaf is going to be on the way out though because this one is looking the most yellow um there is something happening here though like some sort of growth point or something has emerged so we'll see but this is one of my all-time favorite plants. I love this alocasia so, so much. I love the texture. I love the leaf shape. I love the leaf size. Everything about it is just so, so cool. That Ripsalis is in the disco ball planter. That's what's making all of these little light things around the room. Oh, beside that is my Thai pink lipstick plant. And you guys, I'm actually getting some buds on this. And it'll be the first time it's bloomed for me. So I cannot wait, but do you see those buds at the end? They're like white or cream. Some of them are like light green right now. So I'm guessing whatever comes out of these is gonna be the pink. Like I said, I've never seen it go through this bloom process before. So I'm not really too sure what to expect, but oh my gosh, it's so hard how this is backlit. I'm so sorry about the lighting. 
Okay, let's finish up over here so we can get out of this super sunny spot. Here is my Hoya uh, Waliniana UT152. This plant in, uh, I think my last week of plant chores, we had to like remove half of it because it was all withered away. Um, but the rest of the plant that is left is doing amazing. It's growing. We have tons of blooms. There's still tons of peduncles. It had, it's already gone through a whole bunch of blooms and dropped them, but there's more that aren't open yet like that. And then there's some that are open. There we go. So yeah, that plant is doing really, really well. And it's been so fun to watch it bloom so much. Also on the kitchen table here, I do have a few plants just kind of hanging out that don't have permanent spots yet. They do get really good sun here, as you can see. But first of all, we have my baby philodendron splendids. These are coming back from wet stick. I had to cut up my giant philodendron splendid because it came down with a really nasty case of thrips. But as you can see, we have a new leaf coming in. So that one's doing really great. Same with on the other one a new leaf coming in. And then in the middle of those, we have my new Maranta Silver Band, if you saw my unboxing. I now am the proud owner of a Maranta Silver Band and it is just so, so gorgeous. Oh my goodness, I love it. It's so beautiful now that it's all cleaned up and you know the packaging is off of it and everything. So it's just kind of soaking up some sun here. Also the new leaves are unfurling. And then we have one of my current, actually a couple of my like major favorite plants right now are over here. And one of them is my Monstera Escaletto. This is one of my biggest plants right now, which is why I love it so much because I lost a lot of my big plants last year. And now I'm finally having some other ones size up to kind of, you know, fill the void. So yeah, Monstera Escaletto, this plant has been doing amazing. It's been so, so easy. It's climbing a Rousseau pole. Um, I've also been using the BIOS nutrients on it. It's like a natural fertilizer and it gets fuzzy like that, which is kind of fun to see. I actually filmed a whole reel where I repotted this, so um, I'm not sure if that'll be live yet on my Insta, but I did repot it recently and yeah, it's just, it's doing so well, it's so happy. Oh yes, I also moved my fern leaf cactus over here. It used to be at the other window, but it had all of these crazy arms coming out. And then I was like, why don't I move it here? Because then those are still gonna get light from the um, second window up there. So yeah, it takes up so much room. Look at that. <laughs> like it's massive, but I think that it's really going to appreciate all of the extra light in that spot there. Imagine if it bloomed one day, that would be so cool. Oh, also my linearis, can you see? Oh my gosh, I'll try to zoom in, but I don't know if you can see, it has like a bunch of crazy stems or crazy vines coming out the top of new growth, which is really great to see, but it looks kind of funny. But yeah, that one is doing amazing. So pretty. And then the other one that I'm obsessed with right now is my Epipremnum. I'm just gonna start calling this Epipremnum Cebu Blue because I think that it's some variety of Cebu Blue. And I don't know, I'd just rather call it that than calling it Epipremnum No ID every single time. But I think it's some variety of Cebu Blue or similar. So I think we're just gonna start calling it that. But this is about six feet tall now and looking so, so stunning. It did unfortunately suffer a fall a couple of weeks ago. So that's what happened from that, which really sucks. I was honestly pretty bummed to see that that new leaf got damaged. But as you can see, we have a new one on the way, so that's good. But yeah, it does suck that that, that leaf isn't, cause it looks like it was gonna be a pretty big one too. But oh well, I'm probably gonna chop once it gets to the top of the pole as well. We also have my philodendron orange marmalade, which I recently put onto a Rousseau pole as well. And it's actually rooted in, which I was, oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. It was like the root was just poking in there last time I looked and now it's like massive. Wow, it is so vibrant too. My gosh, even the roots are beautiful on this plant. Like what the heck? That is crazy. Is that the only one? Oh, there's another one right there. That is so, so wild. Um, yeah, so that one is going to start to climb real quick here, which is nice. Amedrium medium is still suffering with whatever it's suffering. As you can see, I am going to chop this now because I've, I've waited long enough to try to resolve this issue and it's not resolving. So I'm probably just going to, oh gosh, I don't even know what I'm going to do. I'm hoping that there's a decent amount of roots in the pole for these top leaves, but I'm going to have to check into it and, um, 
yeah, chop the top part of that plant off and try to continue growing it from that because yeah, it's just all of these lower leaves are getting destroyed, which yeah, really sucks. And I still have no idea why that was happening. The roots look healthy and everything. So it's honestly just a mystery to me. Um, what else? More cuttings. I have philodendron gigas, which I'm looking forward to potting soon. It's growing tons of new leaves, even just in propagation. Also, Anthurium viterifolium has been rooting there, these really long cuttings. We also have my Monstera aurea here, who I moved upon, um, and it didn't do anything for a very long time, but it's just recently put out a growth point. Do you see that? Look at that growth point. So that's really, really cool. I also bought some silica fertilizer that I'm gonna use as a foliar spray on this plant to try to prevent this. This is why I moved it to pond because um, the yellow parts were just browning on this plant, which is so, so unfortunate because it's so beautiful, but this one is still good. But yeah, they just get super, super crispy. So hopefully this will work out for the best. I'll get a nice bushy plant because there's multiple cuttings potted in here and the silica will work and you know, hopefully it will just live happily ever after, but we'll see. Also recently cut my philodendron majestic because I think I'm gonna start this plant over. The mother plant is just looking like a hot mess. If you can see those yellow leaves and yeah, I just think it's time to restart it. So I went ahead and took three separate cuttings um, so that I can grow three vines up a pole. Also some syngonium cuttings here. Yeah, do you see what I mean? Like I have so many cuttings to pot up. It's actually kind of crazy. Where am I gonna put them all? I do not know. Allocation Michelitziana down here is doing well after the repot. I was a little concerned. I mean, it's kind of too soon to say. It's only been a couple of weeks, but it's handling the initial like repot phase really well. So thank goodness for that because I did not want this to croak on me. And it's happened before after repotting. Let's see if we can see any roots. Not really yet. Those are all just like the old roots. I don't really see a ton of new root growth, but hopefully soon. And since we're down here, I'll give you all an update on my variegated Thanksgiving cactus cuttings. And I kind of can't believe it, but they've all rooted. I was sure I was going to lose at least like half of them because they were so, so wrinkly and sad looking, but they're all rooted. And as you can see, they even have buds on them, which is so crazy. Like what the heck? <laughs> they're all trying to bloom. It must be something to do with like they thought that they were dying or something because they're under a grow light So it shouldn't be triggering blooms, but I think it must just be that they were cut is what's triggering blooms Or maybe it was cold. I don't know. I don't know, but yeah, it's kind of crazy I'm so so happy that they're making it though like yeah, I just I'm I'm shocked honestly that those really wrinkly ones pulled through but yeah super super cool Soltec Grove, y'all, I'm telling you, that light is really, really good. We also have my Philodendron Glorious up there and my Philodendron Ring of Fire. I'm gonna be chopping that soon. And the Glorious hasn't really done a ton, but it looks like it's coming out with a new leaf, like just starting to work on a new leaf. So I will have to show y'all that whenever it comes out and whenever it kind of just like establishes more and gets growing because those are all just cuttings that I potted in there. All right, now we are on the other side where my Millsbo Tall is. And yes, like I said, Philodendron Majestic, probably not gonna be there for much longer. I'm just gonna start it over from a small plant. We have my Adansonii up there, which is doing okay. Um, I'd like to repot that into plastic soon, but it does have some really nice new growth. I just have to really make an effort to keep up with the watering for that one. We do have a lot of new like growth points coming in from when I chopped it too, so that's pretty cool. Beside that is my Polynera, which is growing now actively, which is great. Um, I think that it's appreciating the longer days because as you can see, we have all these little baby leaves coming in, which are so, so cute. It actually surprises me how well this Hoya does being so far back from the window. Like it doesn't get a ton of light, mostly just like ambient light throughout the day, but it still grows and it looks great. So I'm really happy with it. So my Millsbo wide, or sorry, my Millsbo tall, I've actually stopped running the upper fan all the time. I turn it on sometimes, especially after watering. If these plants are wet, I don't want water sitting in the leaves, so I'll turn it on for a bit. 
but I'm mostly keeping it off and just running the bottom fan. And that's been going really well for me because before I was honestly having to water some of these plants every single day. It was just, they were drying out so fast. It was just, it was too much airflow, honestly. And this cabinet can get really warm. It's 26 degrees right now because it's sunny out today and the house just heats up when it's sunny. But yeah, it was drying out way too much. So that's the change that I made and it's working really well for me. Uh, I haven't even watered this cabinet in a while and it's still at 85% humidity, which is amazing. So let's take a peek. Okay, so first of all, my Iron Cross Begonia, I repotted this a couple of weeks ago in uh, the afternoon of plant chores video. Actually, I don't even think I showed the repot, but I told y'all that I repotted it and I showed you afterwards, but it's settling in really well. I mean, these leaves that were looking really sad, I don't think they're coming back. Those just need to be cut off, but the rest of them have totally perked up. Um, we have that new leaf coming in down there, which looks really good. And yeah, she's, she's already making a comeback. So I'm really excited for that. Um, what else? This is my Alocasia Pink Dragon Aurea Corm living in here. I decided to pop it in the cabinet so that it stays really humid and it gets to be under the grow lights. My outer variegated Hoya polyneura is growing as well. This is the beginning of little baby leaves coming in underneath. Variegated dragon scale. Unfortunately, this leaf came out just all like light green so yeah hopefully the next one is variegated but yeah oh yeah and my philodendron sp silver oh my goodness look at this the leaf is unfurling and it looks actually so good i thought this was going to come in a lot more damage than it is it has some really small specks of damage but nothing too crazy like it looks pretty darn incredible so I've been checking on that like every day. It's just so fun to watch. And then there's more, um, there's this baby leaf in here, which is doing really well. Like this plant has just completely settled into the new pot. It even has roots. Look at that. Like, oh my gosh, flawless transition from wet stick propagation to being potted. Really excited about that one. And then what else, what else? Oh, down here on the lower part, this is my Red Crystal Doriaki hybrid. And look at that new leaf. Oh my goodness. She is stunning. Just stunning. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I've been loving watching that leaf come in. Also a new leaf on my, I believe this is Forgetty Goliath hybrid. Doing really well. I should actually turn it a little bit so that it's not gonna get squished against the door. This is the new leaf on the fry deck, all hardened off. Looks incredible. Um, Anthurium moodianum has been growing like crazy. It always puts in multiple leaves at once. That is a fresh one right there. There's another one coming in too. I'm not sure, oh, it's down there. Oh, 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 hard to see, but it's in there. Hoya hushkoliana variegata is growing like crazy, always. The little pink leaves, so pretty. I always have to be careful to not get the polyneura caught in the door. I recently cut back my Syngonium Albo because it was just getting like the, the um, vines were starting to kind of like trail, you know, like it was actually starting to vine out. And I don't like that. I like it to just be more of a compact kind of bushy plant situation. So I do have like various Syngonium Albo propagations just kind of around the house. Oh, they look so pretty. Like these could honestly, like you could give this to someone as like a bouquet instead of flowers and it's just gorgeous. Oh, oh my goodness, over here, I totally forgot to talk about my Monstera Dubia and that's been one of my favorites right now. So I have to show you. This thing is finally doing better. It was really struggling for a while. It truly was um, in the bedroom. I think because the temperature is so much cooler so I decided to move it out here into the main living space because this is the warmest room. It was kind of at a standstill with growth, but when I moved it, it gave me this leaf. And now, as you can see, it's just unfurling this one. I'm gonna have to kind of guide it. Um, probably should do that soon. I'll have to guide it more onto the plank because as you can see, it's trying to make an escape. This has a Plant Spectrum 32 light in front of it as well. Okay, so now we are at the Vitzjo shelf. And most of the plants are actually doing pretty well on here right now, which is great. 
We have the new Rousseau grow light that I recently installed, which I'm so, so happy with. I think that the Anthurium are really enjoying it also. First of all, we have my Anthurium politiflorum on the edge here. And when I showed this plant in the video where I was kind of redoing this shelf and setting up that light and everything, I got so many questions about this plant asking what it is. So yes, this is my Anthurium politiflorum. If you haven't met her before, love this one so, so much. My favorite Anthurium is just so beautiful with those long strappy leaves and incredibly easy. Definitely a beginner friendly Anthurium. And then over here at the first little shelf situation, we have um, some of my new plants, my Philodendron Jose Buono, which is from my friend Natasha. It's so incredibly beautiful. Um, this is rooting right now, but it's doing well. A couple of Hoya in here also. I recently showed this in one of my last videos. So I won't talk about it too, too much, but um, I did take a peek and it has healthy roots coming in. The Philodendron, I haven't tried to pull the Hoya out yet. I think that they're fine, but I just really want to check on the Philodendron. And yes, it does have healthy roots growing. This has really been catching my eye lately. This is my Begonia Draco Pelta living in this cloche, which it needs, maybe I'll move it to the Acrobar because it needs more space. As you can see, it's really like getting squished in here, but we have a little bloom. And this isn't the first time this begonia has bloomed on me. It is a pretty prolific bloomer, but it's so cute when the blooms come in. Like, you know, as many times as my plants flower, I get excited every single time, honestly. It's kind of hard to see in the cloche, but I don't want to take it off because then the leaves are all going to go everywhere and it's going to be hard to get it back on. But yeah, that begonia is doing really well, which is nice to see because it was struggling for a while. Ripsalis paradoxa doing great. Such a beautiful plant. Begonia autumn ember just living her best life back there, honestly, and looking stunning while doing it. Alocasia black velvet is looking amazing. Alocasia dragon scale here continues to grow with a new leaf on the way there. Silver sword, another one that needs to be chopped soon. It's on my list. Um, Egg leonema silver bay. This really needs to be repotted, but it is actively growing even though it's like squished in this little pot. I mean, I don't think it's so much that it's squished as much as it is that it dries out quickly and I am slow to rewater it. Beautiful Alocasia odora uh, variegata. This is the batik one. Um, this one was the uh, root mealies victim. However, it's made a full recovery, really happily repotted into here. I rerooted it in water and then repotted it and no more root mealies. However, there are mealies on some of these plants. We'll talk about that in a second, but I just discovered that, so fun times. Um, some propagations down here, some Hoya, some Mykins, Peperomia, a few different things. And then over here, we have a bunch of my Hoya. And yeah, like I said, there are mealies on some of these, which is kind of annoying because I hadn't seen mealies in a while, so I kind of thought, that I was past that, but they're actually right here on my variegated compacta, which is not, you know, a fun plant to have mealies on because it's annoying with all the crevices and everything. So I'm gonna have to treat that later. I just kind of put it back and ignored it because I, I just, yeah, I need to deal with it. I literally just discovered them this morning on here though. So it's not like I've been neglecting it for a super long time, but I definitely was annoyed to discover that, especially because this is finally like growing a little bit for me. I've had this plant for like five years and it doesn't ever grow, but it's kind of starting to. These are some newer Hoya that are waiting to be repotted. This is my Hoya chicken farm. Oh my gosh, it just dropped all the blooms. Oh no, oh my gosh, it has a second peduncle. Oh, no way, I thought that this, I thought that that was the one that was blooming and I was like, oh wow, it dropped all the flowers. They're done, they're like, they've already, bloomed and gone through the cycle. So they are just literally gonna fall off. But um, this is my first time seeing that there's a new peduncle on here. This is such a, a crazily blooming Hoya, honestly. It blooms from that big peduncle constantly. How did I mix those up? Look at how long that peduncle is because it's bloomed so many times compared to that new fresh one. Anyways, cool to see that there's another peduncle. This needs to be repotted, honestly. I'll be doing that this spring. Some more Hoya, a Syngonium that needs to be repotted with new leaves coming in. This is the Milk Confetti. It's really, really pretty. Um, but yeah, I need to repot this and find a new location for it because it's just shoved back here. And 
I wanna be able to enjoy this. So I'm gonna move it out of there. All of these seed trays are my Anthurium Bakery babies. Baker eye, sorry, Anthurium Baker eye. I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to get that in my brain. But yeah, they honestly need to be repotted soon. Like they're, they're really growing, all of them. And I don't, oh my gosh, that one even has two leaves already, no way. <gasps> Oh my gosh, I need to get on top of it. What am I even gonna do? Like, what am I even gonna do? Don't know where I'm gonna put them all. No idea. <laughs> but yeah, wow, we got a lot of babies. This is the mother. If you haven't seen Anthurium Baker Eye before, this is her. So yeah, this is actually the newest leaf that she's given me. After having babies, she pushed out this massive leaf and she's literally crammed into this tiny pot, really needs to be repotted but just like doesn't care. Like it's such a resilient anthurium. It kind of blows my mind. Some of my other anthurium that are here enjoying the Rousseau lights. We have my Crystallinum. Uh, no, this is a Magnificum. Wait, is it a Crystal Mag? What is this again? Oh my gosh, what are you? I think it's a Crystal Mag. Yeah, it's been pushing out blooms though, is what it's been doing. Um, they're all actually booming right now. Look at it, there's inflows on all of them. This is my Luxuriance uh, Magnificum. No, Crystal Mag Magnificum. No, <laughs> what am I saying? This is my, wait, uh, Magnificum Luxuriance Hybrid. And this is my Crystal Mag Luxuriance Hybrid. This one is so pretty, oh my gosh. No offense to you, even the bloom. Look at this, look at the red. Oh my gosh, it's actually stunning. This one is just green on this guy. Still cute though, you're still cute. But if I had to choose one, I would for sure choose this one. Crystal Mag Luxuriance. Some type of situation is happening over here with my Hoya Wilbur Graves. I talked about this in one of my last videos, but it has these weird suspicious, I'm thinking fungal spots, but I don't know. And I have not treated it yet because I just haven't gotten a chance. Or I should say I haven't made time for it. Ugh, but gosh, I'm I'm honestly kind of worried about it, you guys, because look at the new leaves. They look like shite. Maybe I should look at this under the microscope. Can fungal make the leaves look like that? Ugh, I don't know, but I need to figure it out because this is like one of my pride and joy plants and all the new leaves are coming in looking so bad. Like, what the heck? What the heck? And then I also have these yellowing. I don't know if it's related or not, but oh my gosh, did this just break off? I have this yellowing happening, happening on my compacta and I never get yellowing or anything on this plant. Like, look at her. She's lush. So I don't know if that's worrisome or not. And then I also have this issue. I don't think that these are related. I honestly think it's a coincidence that all these plants are here because this was by the window before and this serpent was in the cabinet before but then they all kind of had their own issues and then I situated them all over here. So I think that, I don't think that these issues are related. This might be, maybe this, I don't know, I don't know. But anyways, my philodendron serpents, I don't know what is going on with it. Look at how yellow it is. All the leaves just like ugh, look awful. I recently moved it out of the cabinet because I haven't had good luck with it in a cabinet before. So I was like, okay, let's move it out. The roots look healthy, but the leaves come in nice and then they slowly just yellow off. So maybe that's fungal too, I honestly don't know. But, oh shoot, oh my gosh, I just, the camera got caught on my Hoya here. That's so annoying from right there, what the heck? Ugh, oh well. That's my Hoya chingonensis, and I'm obsessed with it. This is like actually one of my favorite plants right now. It is such an incredibly fast growing Hoya. And look at that, oh, the leaves are so satisfying. Like it's just, it's gorgeous and I actually just noticed that there's a peduncle, do you see that? Pedunky dunk on this Hoya. So there's probably multiple, honestly. But yeah, I think that the blooms on that are similar to Hoya Bella, really pretty. So I'm excited to see those. And speaking of Hoya Bella, this one, the peduncles are still progressing nicely. There's multiple on it and they're not doing too much, but they're not drying off. So I'm thankful for that. Same with the Hoya Thompsonii. It is so cute. I love this Hoya, it's so fuzzy. But same with this one, um, has some peduncles that are progressing nicely. So that's really great. 
Some of my new plants that I recently unboxed from Weepop Plants are up here also. The Labissia is back there. And something's also going on with my Monstera Celtipicana. It's been dropping a bunch of leaves too. Maybe these all do have a fungal issue. I honestly don't know. Like, I have never dealt with anything like that before. But a lot, like on this shelf, a lot of these plants are just yellowing and having strange issues. So maybe it is something, who knows? But yeah, apparently I'm just choosing to not be too concerned. Down here we have my gorgeous Alocasia Maharani. That's the new leaf that I am literally obsessed with. I showed this in one of my last videos as well. Oh, I just wanna like, oh, it's so just plump and perfect. Goodness, I love it. Oh, it's just beautiful. Cupria is also living down here now. It's massive, not really doing too much. It did bloom and I cut off the bloom recently and it hasn't really been doing too much since then. My gorgeous begonia, which I also showed in my last video. This is the lucerne I was telling you about that I took that cutting from, but then it popped out this leaf and it's working on another one. So that's great. I think it just had a rough transition from water to soil. Um, what else? Manila's Pride, I don't think it's doing anything too crazy right now, but we love her, she's gorgeous. And this Stapelia actually was blooming, y'all, but it's just dying off now. But this thing has bloomed all freaking year for me, like constantly blooming, so that's pretty cool. Anything else on this shelf? I don't think so. I think that that was pretty comprehensive with what's going on here. It just looks so pretty in here when the sun is out. I love it so much. Oh, also, I moved my Calathea rufabarba out here recently. My um, feather Calathea, and it's doing okay. It, it struggled at first, I'm not gonna lie, because this was living in the office, which is a lot darker and a lot cooler. Um, and then I moved it out here, and it was also during a really sunny week, so I moved it out here. It completely dried out a couple times because I was only watering this, honestly, you guys, like once a month when it was in the office, and then suddenly it came out here, and I was having to water it like every few days because of the massive change in conditions. So it really was not happy with that. I got a lot of dried, crispy leaves, but now it's kind of settling in and bouncing back. But gosh, isn't she gorgeous? I just love this Calathea so much. What an underrated plant. Like, I just love her. So pretty, so soft. Just like such a lush, like, yeah, just fluffy, feathery plant. Highly recommend that one. Honestly, it's my easiest Calathea I've ever had, I think. Okay, we are now in the bedroom and there's, well, there actually is, I mean, there's not a ton of plants in here, but there's some and I think I'm going to be adding more. So most of the plants are in this kind of area. And then I have a couple on my side of the room here. Um, but I think that what I'm gonna be doing is installing my aspect light somewhere around here and creating a whole like little planty corner. I'll move my books out and everything just because I need a little bit more space for plants. And I think it's just gonna be, I don't know, it's just gonna be nice to be able to put some there. So that's kind of what I'm, I'm thinking. And I think I'll make a whole video doing that. So stay tuned. But yeah, anyways, back to this side, I'll start over here. So we have my Wally Grows, which are doing so well, like incredibly well. I'm honestly in awe of these plants up here. And I did just water my Syndapsis and my Neon Philodendron because I had them down for a reel. Um, but these ones are thirsty. You can see this regular green heart leaf. It's kind of wilty. So I'll need to water these after I'm done filming. But ever since I installed the Highland track light, this is from Soltech and I'm obsessed with it. It is pricey, but honestly it works incredibly. Yeah, this really has just changed the game and it looks so beautiful. It's like a spotlight on them and it's so pretty. Anyways, I'm just, I've been obsessed with that ever since we installed it. But the plants, you guys, they are growing like crazy and look at the color that's coming in on my neon or my lemon lime philodendron. It is so pink because it's getting so much light from that track light. I've never seen it go like this pink before. It's just, oh my goodness, look at that. I'm obsessed. Wow. Yeah, so much new growth. All of these, all of them are just doing incredible. I even have my philodendron, one of my philodendron Chironier in here. And that one is growing as well. My boyfriend really likes this one. He always comments on it. It's just hanging out on my desk here. Pretty cute. 
even the Mykins, it's kind of like not hidden down here, but it's just lower than the others and it's still doing really well. So really happy to see that. This is kind of my begonia area and they're doing okay, but I think they're gonna do a lot better once it's spring and summer because I think that the cold temperatures are a bit of a struggle for them. Some of them more than others. Like for example, my Magdalene Madsen has been doing amazing all winter long and it's even been blooming literally all winter long. So yeah, this is just, let me pull her out a little bit more. This is such an easy, easy begonia. It's kind of hard to see with the sun, but yeah, she's kind of like velvety and fuzzy and just beautiful. Behind her, we have my gray feather, which is doing, let's take a look at it. It's doing okay, better than it was before, that's for sure. But I just feel like the growth is gonna come in a lot nicer once, once we have some warmer temperatures. One plant that doesn't seem to mind the cold at all is my Maranta. This is my variegated Maranta and it's so stunning. My only problem with this one is uh, that I underwater it sometimes and then it'll get crispy edges, but she honestly doesn't mind the cold or she doesn't seem to at least. I trimmed her back recently, so she's a lot smaller, but I wanted to get rid of all the crispy leaves. This is my Begonia Irenus. And again, it's doing okay, but I think it'll be happier when it's warmer. My Begonia Sinbad. This one's actually doing okay. It's not, it's not being as fussy as some of the others. Looking really pretty. I recently put a trellis in this one so that it can kind of um, get pinned onto there as it grows. Maculata is not very happy. I noticed that some of the new leaves look like they're kind of dying off. Yeah, maybe I should move it out to the living room. I'm just so tight on space that it's hard to accommodate everyone. It's also going to bloom. This is my like base of my Monstera Albo and it is giving me a growth point there. So that's cool. Philodendron Gloriosum is always looking stunning, even though it doesn't really get a lot of light. This is another really like low light tolerant philodendron in my experience. Like it just continues to grow no matter where I put it. It's crazy. She just looks so beautiful there. Okay, hello. We have, <laughs> my hair is like put in this crazy pony so that it doesn't rub on the mic. But anyways, we have my Marble Queen Pothos, Greta, Honestly, struggled a bit over the winter. We lost some leaves because this really doesn't get any light when it's, I mean, even on the sunny days, it doesn't get a ton of light. So when it's dark out, it's like dark, but we have this vine that goes around the mirror. And then we also have this vine that trails down here. And I took a cutting from her that I think I'm gonna um, grow up a pole. Over here on my nightstand, we have my asparagus fern which we repotted in my chatty Q&A video. So now it's directly potted into this black planter and it's doing incredible. I noticed it pushing out new growth. I don't know where I saw that new vine. It's somewhere in there, but yeah, it's growing. It's looking super healthy and yeah, it's just such a cool, whimsical, again, kind of like fluffy plant. I love this one so much and I love having it here on my nightstand. This light is like my little bedside lamp. And then over here, beside some of my books, we have my Begonia um, Thurstonii. Gosh, how could I forget that? Don't mind the messy closet. But this Begonia is actually not doing too well over the winter. I think, again, it's the cold um, or she hates this grow light. I don't know. But you can see some of the new growth is just coming in pretty yellow. Small and yellow. Yellow around the edges. I mean, it could be anything really, but I think it's temperature that she's not happy with because I've grown her in a variety of light conditions and she's always done really well. There's tons of new leaves, as you can see. I'm kind of considering starting this over from a small plant, like just taking cuttings and starting it over, but it is hard to say goodbye to a plant that's just like this lush and full. Maybe I should just move it out to the living room. Where am I gonna put it though? Maybe where that Calathea is, the Calathea rufabarba, maybe I could put it in that spot and then move the Calathea onto the counter or something because that one doesn't really need a lot of light. So yeah, either temperature or the grow light, it doesn't like. 
not sure, but it was doing even worse without the grow light. So that's why I've just been leaving it on. I've turned this down. This is only at about half strength because I was worried that it was too strong for this plant. Oh, I also forgot to talk about my Cebu Blue hanging there. That I moved from the office because it was like barely getting any light in the north facing window. So I moved it there and then I cut it. It had a lot of just like scraggly vines. So I trimmed it and it's just kind of recuperating, I suppose. Here in the bathroom, we have my Syndapsis Satin Jade or Jade Satin, whichever way it goes. Um, and I was gonna get rid of this plant and then I was like, well, let me just move it to the bathroom and it can live there for a while. And I'm just kind of deciding what I'm gonna do with it in the meantime. I'll probably take cuttings and maybe, I don't know. I think I'm, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not too sure what I'm doing with a lot of my syndapsis right now, to be honest. We have a baby Mykins, a baby Philodendron Brazil. And then in the office, we don't really, this is kind of my boyfriend's like game space right now. So yeah, there's literally, just games everywhere so that's why the desk is in the bedroom now because i'm just gonna like have my stuff in there and then he has most of his stuff in here which is fine because i've obviously taken over most of the house with my plant space so this is kind of his little hobby space um and i wasn't sad to like move my plants out of this space that we're in here because the lighting is just not great like it's the darkest room in the house and it's cold and yeah it's just not ideal so um yeah, that's why there's not really many plants in here anymore, but there is, these are actually my boyfriend's plants. I mean, he doesn't take care of them anymore, but they came from his house when we moved. Um, this is the his cast iron plant, a Milky Way cast iron, which he's quite fond of. So I tried to keep it alive, even though I don't really know a lot about it. And I honestly neglect it, if I'm being real with you. And then Raven Zizi, which I neglect also. I would like to put more care into it though. It does still grow regardless of my neglects, but yeah. This is an east facing window, which is mostly blocked by those trees. And then the only other full plant that I have in here is my um, Black Pagoda lipstick plant. And I just kind of moved it in here because it was taking, like it's just growing very like out in multiple directions and it was not working well on the shelf out there. So I need to find, this is kind of a temporary just spot for it, but I need to find somewhere to actually have this plant displayed nicely because I love my Black Pagoda lipstick, especially with the yellow blooms. So yeah, she's just, oh my gosh. She's just, oh my gosh. Like sap went everywhere. I don't know if the camera picked that up, but slap, sap, sap just slung everywhere. It's a tongue twister. And then down here, I still have my propagation shelf in here. He was telling me to get rid of this out of this room because he wants to use this space. But I'm like, where am I gonna put this? Like, it's fine, just deal with it. So it's still in here. But yeah, we just have um, a bunch of cuttings. This is Monster Albo that, oh my gosh, I really need to sort out this situation because it's growing against the plastic. Anyways, we have just various corms, propagations. These Raphidophora. I need to pot these up because there's finally roots in there. It took forever to root for whatever reason. My perlite prop box is down here, which doesn't really have too much in it right now. It will soon since I'm going to take a lot of cuttings soon, but mostly Hoya and then a couple of just chonkier things like Monstera and Philodendron. And I honestly think that that is all of the plants, more or less. All of the like highlights, I guess. I hope that y'all enjoyed seeing my collection as it currently stands. I cannot wait to see what the spring and summer are going to bring. Like I said, I'm excited about a lot of just upcoming planty projects. So yeah, stay tuned for lots of fun videos over the next several months, I suppose. I mean, hopefully my videos are always fun every time of year, but spring is just something, something a little special for plant people. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for always leaving such lovely comments. I appreciate your guys' support so, so much. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I hope to chat with you in the comments and I will see you in the next one. Bye.